What's going on today? Uh, this is David again. It's coming to bring y'all another video. Um, this is the flood part two. Um, if you started this video on part two, be sure to go to the flood uh, part one. Start from there first. Um, the flood, man. The flood is the word of God and that nothing's going to stop it. Right, so everything that's written from the beginning is going to take place, has already started to take place. Um, we're going to continue this part because we're going we're gonna to discuss some Jeremiah, um, and then we're going to get into some Isaiah. And um, the Israelites have to make a decision. You weren't created to be a part of this system. Um, your identity has been stripped from you. You don't realize that this book uh, belongs to you and the records that have been separated. So it had to be restored because we're in the time of the flood. Uh, the waters are picking up. They're going to keep having new, new, uh, <laughs> new coughs coming around you and right? new names for coughs. Uh, it's not going to stop because you Israelites, you have been lied to. You so-called blacks, native indigenous Indians and mankind. They don't understand that what has happened to the Israelites, the people that I mentioned, blacks, native indigenous Indians, Hispanics of native indigenous Negro descent by the house of your fathers. What has happened to you throughout history and what they portrayed to you as history has been like a, a shortened version. It all starts here in this land. There isn't a, a real breakdown of where you come from originally, right? Who you really are before you got to this land. The reason you're in this western parts of the world is because of the curses of our ancestors falling away from the covenant of God, listening to false religious beliefs, shamanism, uh, you know, whatever religion that's out there, doing their own things, voodoo. That's why you're here. But your great great ancestors were Israelites, okay, and you've just been lied to. But the Israelites must be in Israel or the earth dies. They are part of the ordinance. Okay? So the Lord is going to bring this flood upon the earth to redeem those who are his, who the Father has called from the beginning, the sanctified, and those of the Gentiles who are sanctified by the Father. Because the earth dies when they're not there. The Israelites are not there. Now, the Gentiles in the world today, especially in America, abroad, and other places, they have no idea who you are. And they have no idea what it means to be a Hebrew Israelite. They don't know what it means to them. They just say, oh, those are the Jews over there. They don't know what it means. If they knew what it meant, it probably change their perspective on everything they're dealing with in their life. Because they're, they're being affected also. They just don't know it. And a lot of them are not going to know it. They're going to hear it. Because the flood, the waters, the gospel has to be spread to the whole four corners of the earth. Everyone's going to get the opportunity to get the breath of life, but many are not going to believe it. So they're going to perish. So let's get it, man. Um, the flood, you know, it, it's happening. It's not going to stop. And the Lord is going to bring it upon you as a punishment. This word has been for your welfare, you so-called Israelites, so-called blacks. Native Indigenous Indians, Hispanics, uh, it's been for your welfare, you Gentiles, and uh, many people are not going to believe it. So the curses that are in this book are going to come upon all flesh. It's going to flood you. All these punishments that the Lord has written. So we're going to start with Jeremiah chapter 31. And uh, first and foremost, give all praises to the Most High God, Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. And all praises to you lost sheep of the house of Israel and mankind who fears God. The flood. Let's get it, man. Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 1 through 40. At the same time, saith the Lord, will I be the God to all the will I be the God of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people. Thus saith the Lord, the people which were left of the sword found grace in the wilderness. Even Israel. When I went to, to cause him to rest, right. So uh, a lot of Gentiles are going to yield because you're going to you read about that in um, a lot of the books about the war. So 
the Gentiles who are going to yield to come serve the Lord, they found grace in the wilderness. They're going to learn the truth. Let's read. The Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Right, so you've been drawn because the men are coming out and we are teaching you this word. So you, you're being, a lot of you right now, probably sitting at home watching this, you're being drawn in and you are learning to come closer to your God from this labor. Okay, the Lord has done this. Again, I will build thee, and thou shalt be built, O virgin of Israel. Thou shalt again be adorned with thy tabarets, and shalt go forth in the dances of them that make merry. Thou shalt yet plant vines upon the mountains of Samaria. The planter shall plant, and shall eat them as common things. For there shall be a day that the watchmen upon the Mount Ephraim shall cry, Arise ye, and let us go up to Zion, and to the Lord our God. For thus saith the Lord, sing with gladness for Jacob, and shout among the chief of the nations, publish ye, praise ye, and, and say, O Lord, save thy people, the remnant of Israel. Right, so the Gentiles should be wanting this to happen. You want this to happen. You want the remnant of Israel, God's people, to come back. You want it to happen. Everyone wants it to happen because the order is going to be set. There's going to be a refreshing in the earth. Only good people will be around. Everyone else, dead bodies. <laughs> okay? And I'm not lying. <laughs> okay, you're going to see. Let's read. Behold, I will bring them from the north country and gather them from the coast of the earth. And with them the blind and the lame, the woman with child, and her that travaileth with child, together a great company shall return thither. Right, so the Israelites are going to be called back and the Gentiles are going to assist by bringing them. But they're coming to the wilderness also. Let's read. They shall come with weeping and with supplications will I lead them. I will cause them to walk by the rivers of waters in a straight way. That's right, this flood, these waters, wherein they shall not stumble. Right, because you have to know this flood. You need to know these waters so you make it. For I am a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O ye nations, and declare it in the isles afar off, and say, He that scattered Israel will gather him, and keep him as a shepherd doth his flock. For the Lord hath redeemed Jacob, and ransomed him from the hand of him that was stronger than he. That's right, because the, the, you can't fight the serpent. Therefore, they shall come and sing in the height of Zion and shall flow together to the goodness of the Lord for wheat and for wine and for oil and for the young of the flock and of the herd and their soul shall be as a watered garden and they shall not sorrow any more at all. Right. You don't get this word. You're not going to sorrow any more. Israel. Then shall the virgin rejoice in the dance both young men and old together. For I will turn their mourning into joy and will comfort them and make them rejoice from their sorrow. And I will saturate the soul of the priests with fatness and my people shall be satisfied with my goodness, saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, a voice was heard in Ramah, lamentation and bitter weeping. Rahel weeping for her children refused to be comforted for her children because they were not. Thus saith the Lord, Refrain thy voice from weeping and thine eyes from tears, for thy work shall be rewarded. That's right. Why is she weeping and lamenting? Because the Israelites have to go against their own. Thy work shall be rewarded, saith the Lord, and they shall come again from the land of the enemy. And there is hope in thine end, saith the Lord, that thy children shall come again to their own border. Right. There's hope for your children. Let's read. I have surely heard Ephraim bemoaning himself thus. Thou hast chastised me, and I was chastised as a bullock accustomed to the yoke, unaccustomed to the yoke. Right. Because the yoke of the Lord, it's uh, it's, it's like, I don't want to call it a burden, but it's like a burden. 
because you have you have this knowledge. It changes your eyes and views on everything in life. If you're a man who understands this from the beginning, so a lot of people are going to be unaccustomed to it. They're going to be perplexed what has to happen and what this flood is going to bring. Well, we're going to get into it though on part three. Let's keep going. Turn thou me, and I shall be turned, for thou art the Lord my God. Right, so he's saying, I'm going to be turned, because I'm unaccustomed to this yoke. I did a video called The Yoke. Um, a lot of people, you, you, you can't handle a lot of this meat. Let's read. Surely after that I was turned, I repented, and after that I was instructed. I smote upon my thigh, I was ashamed, yea, even confounded. Because I did bear the reproach of my youth. Right. You're going to find out that everything you've done in your life as an Israelite is what's kept you from these blessings. <laughs> you're going to find out that this whole word has been here this whole time. And you're going to be like, oh my God, why was I worried about all that stuff? Let's read. Is Ephraim my dear son? Is he a planted child? For since I spake against him, I do earnestly remember him still. Therefore, my bowels are troubled for him. I will surely have mercy upon him, saith the Lord. Set thee up way marks, make thee high heaps, set thine heart toward the highway. Set your heart toward the highway. You have to turn away from this place. Your heart has to be with it. Even the way which thou wentest, turn again, O virgin of Israel, Turn again to these thy cities. Turn toward your cities in Jerusalem. Turn your heart away from this place. Walk out of it. How long will thou go about, O backsliding daughter? Right? How long are you going to keep doing this? What you're doing here? What is he going to do for it? For the Lord hath created a new thing in the earth. A woman shall compass a man. Right. So this is the curse. You keep backsliding, you're learning this truth, but you keep turning back to the system. How long are you going to keep doing this? Okay, I'm going to put a new thing in the earth. A woman is going to compass a man. So everyone in the world is under this punishment. Because woman is not supposed to have power in the earth. You're seeing it everywhere, especially in America. You see it, CEOs, politicians, judges. They are not supposed to have any dominion over man. It's a curse, the military. But what did the Lord say? The Lord's going to do this. So the word that is supposed to be for your benefit, you young women out here, Israelite or Gentile, it's also a trap to you. Don't drink that feminine water. I'm telling you. But he's told you, I'm going to put this in the earth. So this is a sign that you're seeing this. Let's read. Israel is just disobedient. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, as yet they shall use this speech in the land of Judah and in the cities thereof, when I shall bring again their captivity. The Lord bless thee, O habitation of justice and mountain of holiness. And there shall dwell in Judah itself and in all the cities thereof together husbandmen and they that go forth with the flocks. For I have satiated the weary soul, and I have replenished every sorrowful soul. Upon this I awaked and beheld, and my sleep was sweet unto me. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will sow the house of Israel and the house of Judah with the seed of man. Right, the seed of man, because man is uh, specific within Israel. So they bring forth the children of life. And with the seed of beasts, right? So because these Gentiles who are going to make it to the kingdom, they are going to be like white sheep. So their children are going to be good children. Let's read. And it shall come to pass, the like as I have watched over them to pluck up and to break down and to throw down and to destroy and to afflict, so will I watch over them to build and to plant, saith the Lord. In those days they shall say no more. The fathers have eaten a sour grape, and the children's teeth are set on edge. That's right. You're not going to hear a bunch of uh, sour wine. Let's read. 
Behold, the days come, come, saith the Lord, that I'll make a new covenant. Excuse me. In those days, saith the Excuse me. In those days, they shall say no more. The fathers have eaten a sour grape, and the children's teeth are set on edge. But every one shall die of his own iniquity. Every man that eateth a sour grape, his teeth shall be set on edge. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I'll make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was an husband unto them, saith the Lord. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my, te they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying, know the Lord, for they shall all know me. So every Israelite is going to have the law in their hearts. That's the new covenant. So if you were saved, as you say in the church today, all of y'all would know the law. You don't even follow it. Period. So the Lord's going to put the law in the inward parts of the Israelites. So why would you think the law is done away with? Let's read. Because this is in prophecy. From the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. Thus saith the Lord, which giveth the sun for the light of day, and the ordinances of the moon and of the stars for a light by night, which divideth the sea when the waves thereof roar. The Lord of hosts is his name. If those ordinances depart from before me, saith the Lord, then the seed of Israel also shall cease from being a nation before me forever. Right, because the Israelites are part of the ordinance of life. They're part of the world. So the world dies if the Israelites are not in the land. It slowly dies, and that's what's happening. And what Satan tries to do now, and his hosts, they try to trick you into thinking things like, you know, uh, we just passed some bill, like $600 billion are going to go to green efforts. It's not going to stop anything. Your water's still bad. It's The world is dying. Let's read. Because they don't want to tell the truth. Everything is ruled by the Spirit, because the Word is Spirit. So the Israelites are created by the Lord. They are, are bound to the covenant by blood. They must be in the land. You can only keep an imposter there for so long. So the Lord has got to remove, he's got to get this flood going. A lot of people are going to perish because of what happened. Thus saith the Lord, if heaven above can be measured and the foundation of the earth searched out beneath, I will also cast off all the seed of Israel for all that they have done, saith the Lord. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that the city shall be built to the Lord from the tower of Hanel unto the gate of the corner. And the measuring line shall yet go forth over against it upon the hill of Gareb, and shall compass about the gulf. And the whole valley of the dead bodies, and of the ashes, and of all the fields, unto the brook of Kidron, and, upon, and up, unto the corner of the horse gate toward the east, shall be holy unto the Lord. It shall not be plucked up, nor thrown down any more forever. Right, a lot of dead bodies are going to take place when Israel gets back home. But the Israelites have to be back in the home. That's part of the waters. It's part of the flood. Okay? And the new covenant is that the law is put into the inward parts of the remnant of Israel. No one is going to not know the secrets. Everyone's going to know it. And they were not going to sin anymore. Isaiah chapter 19, verses 1 through 25. But many people did not understand that this flood is going to... Uh, people in the world today, especially Israel... They keep backsliding. You want to keep pursuing the things you want to pursue. So the Lord is, this flood is going to just, it's going to break everything you've been putting your trust in. You don't come back, you're going to perish. You don't want to take heed to the breath of life, you're going to perish. Um, your pastor's not teaching this. Um, they don't know it. They don't know it. And they're not going to know it. And the reason you're a person who's been sitting in there is because you didn't care about it. But hopefully you've been called out of it and you've heard this because um, this flood is going to crush everything.
Only the straight way of the waters of the Lord are going to get people to, to salvation. The truth of salvation. The burden of Egypt. Behold, the Lord rideth upon a swift cloud and shall come into Egypt. And the idols of Egypt shall be moved at his presence. And the heart of Egypt shall melt in the midst of it. And I will set the Egyptians against Egyptians and they shall fight. Everyone against his brother and everyone against his neighbor. City against city and kingdom against kingdom. Right. Mm -hmm. And the spirit of Egypt shall fail in the midst thereof. Right. The spirit that you're under in your lands, you Israelites, is going to fail you. You're under this holiday spirit. It's going to fail you. You're under the spirit that you've been taught by their waters, feminine waters. It's going to fail you. Let's read. And I will destroy the council thereof. Right. So the council that you've been hearkening to. It's going to be destroyed. And they shall seek to the idols and to the charmers and to them that have familiar spirits. Right? You're going to be, when this flood starts kicking in, you're going to be running to listen to your false pastor. You're going to be running to T.D. Jakes. You're going to be running to Joel Alstein, your spiritual counselor. It's going to, it's going to fail. And to the wizards. And the Egyptians will I give over into the hand of a cruel Lord, and a fierce king shall rule over them, saith the Lord, the Lord of hosts. That's right. And the water shall fail from the sea, right? The waters, the feminine waters are going to fail you. Everything that you've been taught, hearkening to, thinking is of importance in your life, it's going to fail you. And the river shall be wasted and dried up. Right. What does it say in Adam and Eve? It says that all the beasts turn from the water of the serpent because it became venomous. All these waters that you've been learning here, they're going to be venomous to you. What does it say? There should be a crying for wine in the streets. At this time, you're going to wish you knew the Lord because you're not going to get in the door. And they shall turn the rivers far away and the brooks of defense shall be emptied. No one's going to be about to protect you. The brooks of defense shall be emptied. There's not going to be any police. No one's going to be protecting you when everyone's fighting against each other. And dried up. The reeds and flags shall wither. Right. Everything that's what's holding you up, the reeds, everything's going to wither around you. The paper reeds by the brooks, by the mouth of the brooks, and everything sown by the brooks shall wither, be driven away, and be no more. Right. You're just going to be out here. <laughs> the fishers also shall mourn, and all they that cast angle into the brook shall lament. And they that spread nets upon the waters shall languish. Right. Feminine water is going to be broken. It is a trap. So what the Lord say, a new thing shall be in the earth. A woman shall compass a man. That woman's spirit, feminine waters that is discussed in Enoch, it is going to fail you. And there is not going to be any protection for you. If you're a man under this spirit, if you're a woman under this spirit, there will be no protection for you. You're going to be crying for the word of God at this time. Let's read. Moreover, they that work in fine flax and they that weave networks shall be confounded. Right. You worried about your business, getting money, uh, buying crypto, digging for gold. Um, being a real estate investor, all that stuff, you're going to be confounded. And they shall be broken in the purposes thereof. Right. Everyone's going to be broken. Broken. That don't mean you're getting a little slap. The Lord is going to break all these people who are under this. Break. Broken. Okay. All that make sluices and ponds for fish, right? All the people who make sluices, who are controlling these waters uh, for you little fish out there who want to keep drinking up their water, you're going to be broken. That's right. Isaiah chapter 43, verses 1 through 28. But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee, 
and through the rivers. They shall not overflow thee. When thou makest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Right. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Seba for thee. Since thou was precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable, and I have loved thee. Therefore will I give men for thee, and people for thy life. Right. So you're gonna the the remnant who are under the who you you you're following the straight waters. You're gonna make it through the flood. Everyone else is not gonna make it. And he's going to give people for your life. So a lot of people are going to die around you for you to make it. Fear not, I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east and gather thee from the west. I will say to the north, give up. And to the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from far and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yea, I have made him. Right, that's the man, the elect man. He's the beacon upon the high hill. The Lord made them to do his will. Yahweh is the example of what man is going to be. Bring forth the blind people that have eyes and the deaf that have ears. Let all the nations be gathered together and let the people be assembled. Who among them can declare this? Who's teaching you this? And show us former things. Let them bring forth their witnesses that they may be justified or let them hear and say it is truth. Right. They can't do it, but let them hear and say that it's the truth. Be upright. Ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen. Right. You are the servants whom the Lord hath chosen. You men who can teach the former things, not anyone else. You have restored the word to bring it back to Israel. Let's read. That ye may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. I, even I, am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. I have declared and have saved, and I have showed when there was no strange God among you. Therefore, ye are my witnesses saith the Lord God, that I am God. Yea, before the day was, I am he, and there is none that can deliver out of my hand. I will work, and who shall let it? Thus saith the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, for your sake I have sent to Babylon, and have brought down all their nobles, and the Chaldeans, whose cry is in the ships. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. Thus saith the Lord, which maketh a way in the sea and a path in the mighty waters, which bringeth forth the chariot and horse, the army and the power. They shall lie down together. They shall not rise. They are extinct. They are quenched as tow. They're drowned. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The beasts of the field shall honor me, the dragons and the owls, because I give waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people, my chosen. That's right. The beasts shall honor him. and They're going to get these waters because they were chosen by the father from the beginning. This people have I formed for myself. They shall show forth my praise. But they, but thou hast not called upon me, O Jacob, but thou hast been weary of me, O Israel. Thou hast not brought me the small cattle of thy burnt offerings. Neither hast thou honored me with thy sacrifices. I have not caused thee to serve with an offering, nor weary thee with incense. Thou hast bought me no sweet cane with money. Neither hast thou filled me with the fat of thy sacrifices. But thou hast made me to serve with thy sins. Thou hast wearied me with thine iniquities. I, even I, am he that blotteth out thy transgressions for mine own sake, and will not remember thy sins. Put me in remembrance, let us plead together, declare thou that thou mayest be justified. Thy first father has sinned, and thy teachers have transgressed against me. Therefore I have profaned the princes of the sanctuary, and given Jacob to the curse, and Israel to reproaches. Right, that's part of the flood. Israel will not 
do what they're supposed to do. So you're under these curses now. Uh, Isaiah chapter 59, let's go to verse 19. Because the flood is going to take out a lot of you Israelites for your sins and your iniquities, uh, the ones who won't turn. So there's going to be a flood from Satan upon you. They're going to come get you. They're going to come after you. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. And the Redeemer shall come to Zion and unto them that turn from transgression in Jacob, saith the Lord. Right. So the, the enemy is going to come against the Israelites and he's going to lift up the standard. Right. They're going to come against you here. That's part of the flood. Everyone in the world is going to find out who the real Israelites are when this system starts coming against the children of Israel. They're going to see it as blacks or Indians or whatnot or Mexicans, but we know who they really are. Um, they're going to come against the, the well, those who are, that won't turn from their iniquity. And, he's in a, and he says, when the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. And the Redeemer shall come to Zion and unto them that turn from transgression in Jacob, saith the Lord. Right. So the Redeemer is going to save those who have turned from transgression in Jacob. So the voices who are the men of God, if you're under them like Noah, you're going to make it. Because you're going to lift up the standard of them. They're going to have power. As for me, this is my covenant with them, saith the Lord, my spirit that is upon thee and upon and my words which I put in thy mouth shall not depart out of thy mouth, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, seed, saith the Lord from henceforth and forever. Right. So the Israelites are the elect men. <clears throat> they are going to be, let me get that scripture. Because only certain men are man. And those are the men like Noah. They are the face of the Lord. They are the elect. Let's see. Let me get this. So out of all the Israelites, not everyone is man. Not everyone is man. One moment. Right. Joshua chapter 23. Because they're going to get the power to go against war. So one man's going to chase a thousand. One man. Joshua chapter 23, verse 10. One man of you, you Israelites, one man of you shall chase a thousand. For the Lord your God, he it is that fighteth for you, as he hath promised you. Right. So one of these men who the Lord has selected, who are going to be the beacons upon the high hill, they're going to chase 10,000 people. They're going to have the power. They're going to subdue. So that's going to be the end of part two. Um, let's give all praise to Most High God, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, and uh, be on the lookout for part three. Peace and blessings. Shalom.